Welcome to another episode of Purchase to Profits. I'm Seth Ferguson. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss our daily interviews with successful real estate investors. Our guest today has been investing in real estate since 2004. By the age of 26, he was already ex-Israeli Special Forces, had an engineering degree, and was working for an Israeli high-tech company. He has supported and mentored hundreds of investors in successfully purchasing over 3,000 single-family homes and over 100 flips in multiple cities across the United States. Danny Bate Orr is founder of Simply Do It Investing. Danny, welcome to Purchase to Profits. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you, Seth. I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to this. Um, so to kick things off, do you want to tell us what your real estate goals are right now? Well, uh, for me, from the get-go, the reason I started investing in real estate for my own portfolio and then you know, I started helping others was to uh, realizing that just depending on your W-2 income just doesn't make, you know, doesn't work. The default that I was already groomed to from school, from, you know, just didn't make sense to me. And um, I couldn't find the answer how to go about, you know, um, how to go about it. It wasn't obvious that the real estate is the answer uh, at first. Um, but when I started, early, you know, saving some, you know, a little bit of money and started looking what to do with it and stocks and options didn't really produce the rewards relatively to the risk, I started exploring. And knowing one thing, I don't know, or maybe a few things, I don't know what the answer is. I'm not okay with the default of the, you know, the work, 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 you know, for the next 10, 15 years and, and uh, you know, and, and, and have, you know, uh, um, very little to show for it. Um, and I also very early uh, on gave up on the, on the get rich quick kind of a scheme. I, I didn't know how to do it. I think I still don't know how to do it. Uh, but, I, but, you know, the, I knew, at least I acknowledge that if I don't know how to do it, I might as well go after the get rich slow kind of a process. Uh, so that was, in a, you know, in, in a hard moment, like, you know, kind of giving up on a, on a fantasy and, you know, and focusing on, on something more tangible. And through some activities, I was young, you know, I was still in, you know, living in Tel Aviv, Israel at the time. Um, I started with that goal. I just, my, my clear goal was a really big goal not to follow the footsteps of my, you know, the generation before me in terms of what they were doing and go on a different path. Um, you know, at first I just thought I would do real estate on the side, but that took over. Uh, with a clear secondary goal or, or uh, primary goal, but it came on a second, is to get to the point that the real estate that I own in the long term will sustain my lifestyle with the need to work, with partially needed to work, um, and, you know, and go about you know, uh, adding into financially into my lifestyle regardless if I decide to work or not. So that was the ultimate goal is to get to that point. Um, and the secondary was just not to, to follow the same path that a lot of people are taking, where work, 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 which is nothing wrong with it. It just wasn't, you know, wasn't the, the formula I was willing to adhere to. Yeah. yeah. So, so when, when you were thinking that you didn't want to work forever and work, 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 did you have a set amount of real estate that you wanted to get to? So did, did you think in your head, if I own $10 million, I don't have to work? anymore or how did you structure that in your mind um i i structured in my mind more of a cash flow how much cash flow i will need per month or annually at what age and that's still something you know kind of is my 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 uh, my uh, my life and how it's like a, it's like a reverse engineering kind of a way okay in order to get to that cash flow i need so many houses in order to buy so many houses i need so much cash for the down payment in so many years so it's kind of going backwards and not going forward um, and I, I have to say, I, I, I adapt, I change, you know, the goals or, or, or I find better ways. I think over the years I found, I don't want to say shortcuts, but other vehicles or other ways to get to that point sooner rather than later. So that was kind of the, the interesting thing is you start doing, you start finding other ways to go in and, you know, help accomplish the goal, but maybe faster or better. So it's just, uh, it, it always evolves. Yeah, you know, the, the process, sure. not, not the goal, but the process. 
Yeah. And, and do you have any routines or rituals that you do to, to keep yourself hungry and, and keep you focused? Uh, wow. Um, I don't have routines. I'm just, I live it day in, day out. Yeah. So for me, every day or every week, there's something going on real estate wise, selling, you know, I feel that I'm being challenged by the, by the, 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 the situations. So, uh, okay, why is this house not selling? Why is this house not renting? Mine or my investors, what can we do? What can we do to improve? Um, can I, you know, is this a good deal to buy? I'm always, I, I, I call it um, it's like a real estate investing muscle. I keep training that investing muscle, uh, which keeps me always, you know, you know uh, um, hungry for more, involved, knowledgeable, uh, see what's going out there. It never dies, you know, it's, it's, it's clearly a muscle. The more you transact, the more comfortable or confidence or, or, uh, um, or uh, um, you, you understand you are and you still want to do that. But you know what? The more you transact and do, the more you know you don't know enough. Yeah. <laughs> it never stop. I never stop learning. I learn all the time because things change and I, you know, maybe reach new uh, plateaus and new... Uh, you know, new corridors that I didn't know existed before. And all of a sudden I have to deal with new situations. So you yeah. never, you know, you never stop learning. Yeah. And, and would you say that your time uh, in the army with the special forces has, has helped you? Cause that's, you know, it's really spe- like, that's world-class uh, like that, that's a world-class operation. Um, w- would you say that helped you or has that affected you in any way? Uh, I think the, uh, it affects you in, a um, couple of ways. One, goals, you know, um, not, not goals, things you think you cannot do, you can accomplish. Um, we've done really hard, you know, mostly in training. That's the basic of the, the training is you do a lot of hard things in training so it will be easier when you get to a combat situation. It's all about breaking your uh, psyche or not breaking or showing your psyche, your mental, you're able to do more than you think you can. Uh, that is always being in the back of my mind. Definitely something that helps. Uh, that's one thing. The second thing is, which is still another muscle that needs to be uh, trained nonstop, is, co- is the focus muscle. Staying focused is extremely difficult. Um, you know, even the, ba- the military background doesn't uh, eliminate that. It's extremely hard to stay focused on, on few things that you think that you should be doing. And that's, I call it another muscle. It's another muscle you have to train. And part of that muscle is also to learn to say no. No, I don't do this type of uh, the transactions. No, I'm not interested in that. Although it mm-hmm. sounds very lucrative. That's a difficult thing to, for people to, to give up, the, the fear of missing out. Yeah. So uh, how do you stay focused? Like if, if everybody, you know, everybody has problems staying focused from time to time, what are some things that you do to make sure you're, you're uh, crystal clear? So first of all, learn to say no. I, you know, I literally say no to deals and you know, transactions and offers that you know, excite me for a second and then I remind myself. It's a mental game to remind yourself. And then when, when, uh, when, when you're getting distracted by something, you just have to stop for a second and say, okay, either I, I, I'm a list person, here's my list, you know, my checklist, I have to cross that checklist. And then in the checklist, it's always gonna be the priority of what needs to be done. Then, okay. Bottom of the, of the list, top of the list, and that helps you know, to stay focused. Yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's a constant struggle. By the way, I have to admit, um, I don't do anything on Facebook in terms of, you know, act, you know, uh, I think, you know, scrolling or, uh, you know, whatever, posting. Yes, I am on Facebook. Yes, we do marketing on Facebook. And I, you know, chat with people on Facebook. So Facebook for me is a, is a, is a business tool. It's not a, a social tool. In terms of checking on my friends or other people, where they are and what kind of uh, photos they're taking, no. And that takes time. When you're really engaged with that, that takes time to, to put aside. So I didn't close Facebook down. It's, it's a really important tool for me for work. But I decided it's a work tool and not a, you know, not a time killer kind of a tool. So it takes some time. And I think that's a huge time waster. Um, and I, even if I have a few minutes, I'm like, okay, no. I'd rather go and listen to a podcast to clear my mind you know, and not go and, you know, scroll down on Facebook, which, you know, pretty boring. Yeah, time, uh, time can disappear pretty quickly when yeah, you do yeah. that, that kind of yeah. stuff. 
Yeah. So it, at, out of all the deals that you've done, is there one that stands out as a keystone deal that really propelled you forward? There's probably two, but I, you know, we can, if we have time, we can talk about both of them. But, uh, sure, yeah. I, I would say uh, uh, the first one I did, the first rental property that I did was really, um, you know, it was really the eye-opener because I bought a house in a tiny town called Phoenix, Arizona. Nobody heard of it. Uh, that was back in 2002. I lived in Tel Aviv, Israel, sight unseen from the builder, never visited. I actually went there after I purchased it um, uh, for the first time. Um, it was, you know, I remember I had not enough funds to, to do the deal by myself. So I brought my cousin and we split, the, you know, you know the, 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 the money needed. I remember we left, you know, it was 26 or 27. Uh, we left the office where we signed the documents. We're go, going down, you know, one of the uh, high rises in Tel Aviv in the elevator, looking at each other and kind of, what have we done? What have we just done, right? And you got to remember, you got to put it in perspective. 2002 is what? It's 17 years ago. But Google was a startup, okay? Yeah. Google Maps were not around, not to mention Street View, right? Uh, Facebook, what Facebook, right? Zillow wasn't even conceived as a dream. You know, the, the internet era was very early uh, in terms of what is in enabling us today, right? Today I'm on forums and groups and people from all over the world buying the United States as if they're, you know, as if they're, you know, doing a you know, bakery, uh, you know, buying, the, you know, donuts. I don't know. It's, it's amazing. I'm blown away. But uh, um, I was very unknowledgeable about what I'm doing uh, or very, you know, minimally knowledgeable. It just made more sense to me as an investment um, than anything else I've seen. And I was very patient. I, it was a great deal because it taught me a few things. Number one, things can go very well, you know, even when you don't plan, right? Phoenix in, in 2005, 6, 7 uh, doubled, actually more than doubled. That house, you know, bought me additional houses because they refinanced. That was one thing. So that was one thing that it, it was really good about it. The second thing it also kind of taught me about dealing with tenants because first of all, I thought you buy on a Monday and you lease on a Tuesday. Okay. That wasn't the case. Nobody even yeah. told me you be ready. It may take 30, 45 days, right? It took 45 days. Um, and then the tenants who moved in actually stayed there for five and a half years and they were only late to pay the rent twice. And that may sound pretty good. It's actually, when you understand why they stayed for such a long time, you realize uh, uh, what you were missing. Uh, after a few years, I already moved to the States and I came out you know, to Phoenix and I went to the property to see it. And when I come in, I'm like, oh my God, this is a zoo. This is not a, this is not a house. Now, let me tell you, this was a $130,000 house, brand new, in a nice community, in a nice suburb, you know, a, a middle class neighborhood. It wasn't like a rundown area, good schools. You know, I call it a very boring, you know, real estate, super boring. But that super boring meant a family with four kids, two dogs, hamster, and a bunny. <laughs> and, I, and I kid you not, that was, that was the house. Uh, uh, um, and I, at first, when I got there, I didn't know uh, that, you know, the, there's a little zoo being ran in my house. And I was pissed. I was very mad, right, for not knowing, for not, you know. And obviously, my property manager didn't know either um and i was very mad about that because apparently it wasn't going on just uh, you know a week ago and it was probably going on for a longer period of time but the good thing obviously they didn't move out they stayed now actually when you have when you're a parent and you have four pets and four kids to be late to pay the rent only twice that's actually kind of a miracle um, yeah. so i liked it that they stayed there uh, the day they announced, uh, you know, informed us that they're moving out, I just called my property manager and said, listen, you better not, you better not return any of the deposit because don't call me and say, oh, we already reimbursed them and now we have money that we need to fix the property. I said, that's not going to, I'm not okay with it. So I made sure they're not going to return because I knew everything is going to go. It cost me $1,000 to fix up the house. 900 out of their power from the deposit from for their damages so not a bad you know not a bad deal at all and that was like oh my god you know it, it paid and on time and it was rented and occupied for a long term um 
um, and um, it doubled, more than doubled in value when it reached, you know, more than $300,000 at a certain point in what, two, three years. And I refinanced and he bought me others. Amazing deal, right? It's a good story. Not every house is like this, right? I have better ones and I have worse ones, but it just was the one that kind of made everything real. Like yeah. street and house and people and property managers, all of a sudden you start gaining the experience of problems and issues and good things. Yeah, for, for sure. And, and I think the main thing with that is, you know, you actually took action and did something. Whether or not you were over in Israel in Tel Aviv, you, you had never seen the place, but you still went ahead and did it and learned right. along the way, right? right. Um, yeah. what, what was that second deal you were talking about? The second thing was the first time I did the flip. The first time I did the flip, I was very nervous because I was already a knowledgeable investor. And I think the more knowledgeable you are, the more you're aware of the risk and concern and fear. So it's actually the first deal I may have been beginner enough to be stupid, right? Uh, or not understanding. The second deal I was already knowledgeable, probably seven years, seven years or so later. Um, I did my first deal. It probably took me, it was my first flip, flip was in Atlanta, purchased at the auction. And it took me seven or eight months to find the right team. So it really took me a time to find and probably two trips out there to find the right team. Um, and it was really good, maybe the best deal I ever done because we bought at the auction um, for 30000 and change. We spent, you know, a few hundred dollars on, on, on insurance. And as soon as the, the team that I worked with in Atlanta uh, finished the auction, they went straight to the house. They knew the house already, but they, this time they actually went to the house, they knock on the door, and they, they told the lady, we represent the owner, we just bought it at the auction, and we want to know what your intentions are. And they're really two nice guys, right? Two nice guys, and, they, and, and she said, listen, I know the house I went to the auction, there's nothing I could do you know, to prevent it. I've been through some, you know, some, some personal issue in life, um, but I have a job, I have, you know, I'm qualified for a mortgage and this is my house and I, I've been through some, you know, bad ordeal, but it doesn't matter. Um, I want to buy it. And they said, listen, here's where we're going to stop. You know, here, are, here is our business card. Here's someone else, an agent, you know, that uh, is not affiliated with us. You can contact, contact any agent, have them contact us. Let's put a deal together. And they said, we want to be, their approach was, we're going to be very respectful to this lady because of what she's been through. This is her house and we're going to work with it. We're going to work with you. And they wanted everything to be very clean. So nobody could come and say something was done, you know, uh, uh, suspiciously or, and they turn around and within 30 days to the, you know, to the date, we sold the house and we bought it for 31 and change paid, you know, maybe a few hundred dollars, a few more things. So we were all in $31,000, maybe a few bucks. And we sold it for eighty eighty thousand dollars within nice. thirty days. So percentage wise, amazing, right? Yeah. Um, and we had, you know, bef during the first few years after the crash, two thousand and probably I mean, eleven, twelve, maybe ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I mean, I have multiple stories that the flips were, you know, amazing successes. It wasn't always like this, but uh, but that definitely, you know, was uh, uh, was just a sweet small deal, quickly in and out. Oh my God, it's just uh, like a wet dream. You know what? When you're transacting, those things happen too. Not always, but they do. It ha I have multiple such stories. So absolutely, that, that, you know, it happens. Yeah. You know, those uh, lucky, lucky ones. It's like, you know, sometimes it's kind of, you, know, you know, winning the lottery, but buying the ticket. You may not yeah. necessarily get the first prize, but you participate. And you get a small prize here and a small prize there. Yeah, I think the chances, you know, the... the the chances with the flipping is, is much better than, uh, uh, than the lottery. But if you, if you just sit on the sideline and think about it and they debate and still, obviously nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, you can read all the books you want, but unless you actually do it, that's where you really learn. Exactly. Uh, Absolutely. Doing, doing the deals. Yeah. I have um, one of my investors, if I can add, he said, yeah. he, he said something that I really like. Uh, when he was uh, doing a case study in one of our, uh, you know, one of our, uh, our meetings, and he said, I actually, my expenses as a, as a rental owner went down over the years. So what? Your expenses went down over the years? How, how do you explain that? And he says, here's the thing. 
when you own real estate for multiple years, you already learn what you should be doing at a certain point and what you, you, you should not. Replace the carpet or clean the carpets, right? Put, you know, uh, hardwood floors or, or laminated floors or, or keep the carpet. And, and you learn what to tell the, uh, the property manager to do based on your experience. And slowly you see that you can actually lower your, your expenses and by that increase your income. And he says that takes time. So it's exactly what you're saying. Over time, you learn better what's important, what's not important, and how you can save and, you know, and effectively increase your income. Yeah, no, that, that is so true. Um, yeah. So, so ever since you started your investing uh, journey, how has your life changed because of real estate? So this is what you know, supports my life. Uh, I do it full-time uh, for my own portfolio. I do it full-time working with others. Uh, the best part of it is that it enables me to control 100% of my time, which means I have a six and a half years old boy. And since the day he was born, I was there. You know, I, I do travel, but when I'm at home, I'm with him. I didn't miss on him growing up, you know, uh, from, from, from everything, you know, related. And for me, that's, the, you know, school events, I'm there. So for me, that's, uh, you know, you go to, before you're a dad, people talk about it all the time, family, 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 which is true. When you become a, you know, a father, you, you see what's really important in life and you're able to be there. All of a sudden, it's like, wow. Everything what people were talking about, it's so true about spending more time with your family. So I was able to, I'm still able to do that. And that for me is the, is the best part of, of, of the real estate or owning my own business and being able to be with my family, whatever yeah. I want. And, you know, nobody says, nobody is dictating to me. Yeah. Except and, my wife. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that won't change. <laughs> yeah, so. okay. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel um, do you feel more financial financially secure with your portfolio? Like, how has that side of your life changed? Um, well, for the most part, yes. Uh, I will say there are ups ups and downs, and when you have ups and downs, that can really kind of shake the ground. And it's actually a good thing sometimes because it makes you uh, strengthen your portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, so overall, you know, uh, I, I shifted my focus, you know, from from, from rentals to flips, and now I'm shifting back to, flip, to rentals. Um, and um, and that, that actually is a good thing. A good thing. However, during the, the downturn, I, you know, I can say that 10 years ago when we had the, 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 the economical downturn, that was uh, definitely affected my portfolio. Uh, a lot of the things I had to get rid of, sell. Uh, I felt that I'm kind of starting all over. Uh, but when you start all over, you know, that situation that also tells you, okay, I, I have to do things much better. Not only do I have to do things much better, much stronger, much safer, I have to make sure that the people that I guide or work with benefit from, from my mistakes as well. So they have a more secure future too. So um, it's, not a, it's not a smooth ride. There's ups and downs for sure. Um, the downs are an opportunity to self-examine and, and check yourself. Um, and make sure you do better, you know, for the moving forward, even yeah. better. Yeah. And, and I think that's a good message because you're always reevaluating where you're at with your portfolio. And, yeah. uh, and, and it's, you know, your portfolio isn't just stagnant. It's always evolving and changing. And, and uh, right. that's what some people starting out might not realize. But once you get a, a larger size, uh, it's always shifting a little bit. Yeah, absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. So, so Dan, where can people find you if they're looking for some more information or if they're interested in uh, getting you to help them out uh, to build their portfolio? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, so first of all, our website is simplydoit.net. Simply, like the word simple, simplydoit.net. Um, I also, uh, I hope it's okay, but I, that I'm saying I, every week at Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific time, I do a live Facebook session that I bring a topic that I talk about and I take questions. So it's more of a, you know, it doesn't cost anything. It's just for information. Um, and from that, when we record it, we put it on our YouTube, we put it obviously on Facebook. Uh, so it's very easy to just join and participate or not participate or listen, consume recording, consume live, whatever works for you. Uh, and when people want to take it to the next level and uh, you know, maybe have a more intimate uh, session, we hold a strategy session. Anybody who's interested, 
and we just talk, you know, no sales pitch. I'm really not good with sales pitch. I'm just, you know, let's have a conversation about you, what you're trying to accomplish. Are we a good fit for you? Uh, you know, can we even help you? And we'll take it from there. And if you want to work with us, with pleasure. If you, this is not a good fit, I'll be the one who's going to tell you this is probably not a good fit. Yeah. I've told people, listen, go take care of your business before you come working with us or finish that or, or you know what, what you're trying to do is not, you know, what we're doing, focus, right? And that's okay. Uh, you know, we want to work with, uh, with people that, you know, what we do, you know, fits what they're trying to accomplish. There is synergy there and we can really help make an impact on their lives. No. Uh, that's great and, and you've helped lots of people so that that's uh that's excellent yeah yeah absolutely so uh, danny just want to say thank you so much uh for taking the time today to uh, share your success story with us i'll be uh thank you for the questions and thank you for having me and i'm always happy to share you know so people can benefit that's all that this is all uh, what is all about yeah that's so true well th th thanks once again and uh to you our viewers I wish you all in your journey from purchase to profits. See you next time.